To play this piece well, you must use thumb B flat. There are a few times where we have to take off the thumb B flat, for example, in the chromatic scale that happens in the fourth line. But other than that, it's majority of the time we're using thumb B flat for this. If you're unsure how to use thumb B flat, check out my YouTube video about thumb B flat. The other difficult part of this etude is counting in 6-8. For many people, 6-8 is a mystery, but I created a video that specifically deals with how to count 6-8. I strongly encourage you to check that out before going through the rest of this video. In order to play this piece with great technique at a fast tempo, you have to know the scales and arpeggios that make up the different technical passages. Here we're going to focus on first the D flat major scale, then we're going to do the B flat minor scale. So if we start out with our D flat major scale, it's the key signature that our, our piece is in. We go from D flat to D flat. Then we're going to go down two more notes. So from that D flat, we go C, B flat. Play the same notes, just go B flat to B flat instead of to D flat. That is a B flat minor scale, which is the key that this piece is in. If you notice, we start on a B flat and end on a B flat, but we have more than two flats in the key signature. So that's what makes it in B flat minor. Uh, at the beginning, we start with a B flat minor triad. Throughout this piece, you'll see it sort of um, manifest, and you want to be really familiar with that. So, in addition to practicing your B flat minor scale, we're also going to practice the B flat minor arpeggio. That is the first, third, and fifth notes of your B flat minor scale. So, B flat, D flat and F. You can practice that slurred or tongued. Get really comfortable with that pattern because it happens a lot in this etude. Here are a few places in the beginning, middle, and especially the end where this arpeggio occurs. The other uh, scales or arpeggios that we want to look at uh, occur towards the middle to end of the piece. And this is a B fully diminished seventh chord. You don't have to know what that means, but if you're curious, you can look up. There's lots of YouTube videos about music theory. But the notes in it are B natural, D, F, and A flat. That's just one octave of that. B, D, F, A flat. Here's uh, the full range of the instrument, which I would encourage you to work towards. There I started on that uh, B in the middle of the staff, went up to high B natural, and then all the way back down to low B if you have a B foot on your flute. Other ways to practice that arpeggio would be in groups of four. So here I'm going to do B, D, F, A flat. Then I'm going to start on D and go D, F, A flat, B. And we just keep going up like that. I'll do it slowly. Now start on D. Start on F. A flat. Back to B. And D. And then you can do the same thing coming down. And so on and so forth, all the way working down the octave. Those are in groups of four. In this piece, we see this grouping in sixes. So we have, um, starting from our low D, we can do... So from low D to F, 
just playing those four notes. And then I can go up one and start, instead of on the low D, I'm gonna start on F and go to high, or the middle A flat. One, two, three, four, five, six, F to A flat. Then we start on the A flat and we'll go up to what, a B? Again, thinking one, two, three, four, five, six. Make sure that your groups are even. Then we start on a B, up to D again. And then you keep going through this as, as you work higher in the register. If you look at our exercise then down in, in the actual piece, we start and it's only a matter of time before you can connect that then to the music. Once you're comfortable playing that B fully diminished seventh chord, you can go ahead and work on it in the piece in measure 32. Here I'm going to play one ta la ta li ta two, or one, two, three, four, five, six, one, and in the 16th notes. You notice at the end there I go F, F, and you want to make sure that that's in time all the way through. So I'm going one ta la ta li ta two, in perfect time, no matter what your tempo is. If you want to take it down to the eighth note, one and two and three and four, just make sure it's in time. And then we would do the next one. So F da 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 da, A flat on the next downbeat. And so on and so forth. You would just go through beat to beat. That's big beat to big beat. Trying to get these to be fluid, even 16th notes all the way throughout. At the end, it should just fly off the fingers relatively easily without rushing. In measures 35 through 38, we see another kind of fully diminished seventh chord. This one starts on A natural, and the notes are A natural, then we go to C, then E flat and G flat. Again, practice this one out of the context of the music. So we're going to do a full um, range of the instrument slowly. You can do it tongued or slurred. I suggest doing it both ways. All of the notes in 35 through 38 are these notes, these four notes. They're all jumbled up and everything, but you have only four notes to deal with in this whole passage. So it's really important that you get that pattern on your, under your fingers. Let's practice it, this one in groups of three. So we do, that's A, C, E flat. And now I'm gonna start on this C. And I go C, E flat, G flat. Then I start on the E flat. So that's uh, E flat, G flat, A. Then we start G flat. And you can keep going with these three little groups. So, uh, takes a little bit of concentration, but that's uh, one way to practice it. You could also do the other ones that we practiced, which were groups of four or groups of six. Here's the group of four, starting on A. Etc. all the way up and down the instrument. And then groups of six, one ta la ta li ta two. There, I repeated the second group, and you can do that uh, just to get more flexibility and steadiness in the fingerings. The next passage that I want to look at is line one, two, three, four, five. This line has many tricky note combinations and probably some new notes um, or new note names for many of you. Um, here we see uh, F flats, which if you take an F natural and then you want to flat it, so you want to go down a half step. 
So take your chromatic scale and the next note below on your chromatic scale from F is E natural. So uh, that F flat is the same as E natural. So the second half of that bar is A flat, D flat, that F flat is the same as E natural, then A flat. And then we also have double flats. Double flats take the same process. So we start with, we have an A double flat. That's those two flat signs that are right next to each other. We take an A natural, and then we go down two half steps, or two steps on our chromatic scale. So we flat it once, so that A goes to A flat, and then we flat it again, and we go to G natural. So that A double flat is the same as G natural. Same process for the B double flat. You start on B, go down one half step to B flat, and then another half step to A natural. So B double flat equals A natural. Now, to practice this passage, I suggest taking one big beat at a time. So you're gonna take three eighth notes. Uh, the first one would be one la tali. So, just that much. And you're gonna play it two or three times in a row. You wanna go slow enough that you can play it accurately. If that means for you, or, but you've got to keep the right rhythm all the way through. Okay? It does not matter the speed that you practice it at. Initially, you must practice it slowly so that you have accurate fingerings that you're learning. You don't want to learn mistakes, especially with this next one. So we have, this is where we have our A flat, D flat, then uh, the F flat, which is E natural, and A flat. You notice I'm putting a space in between every time I play it. That's think time. You've got to give your brain time to learn these notes and sort of memorize them with your fingers. Then the next one, A flat, D natural, F, A flat. Next. Next, starting on the D flat. And now here's D flat, F flat, which is E natural, A double flat, which is G natural, and D flat. One, two, and three. Next one, D flat. And the G flat, uh, B double flat. Again. And then you would continue on through that process. Keep doing that every day and it will get better and your fingers will become more acquainted with the patterns and it will just become second thought. You will just know how to do it. Uh, the other way to practice it is to connect it to the next beat. This is the second step in the process. So first you have to get comfortable with the notes in just that one little group. Then we need to connect the groups. So I would practice it at the beginning of the line like this. So I connected A flat to the lower A flat. One, la, ta, li, two. Then I'm gonna go two, la, ta, li, one. And you're connecting those octave A flats all the way throughout. This, would, this process would continue. You could practice it all in one fell swoop. that I repeat that first note in each group. So I go one, la, ta, li, two, and then I'm gonna start on two. Two, la, ta, li, one. So you will have a double note, a repeated note. That's to bridge the gap over the beats so that you learn not only how to play each beat individually, but then you also bridge to that, those gaps so that you can play from one beat to the next one. Next, we're gonna look at the rhythm in measure 35. Here we have a tricky rhythm because it, it feels like a hemiola here. And that means that they're displacing the beat and making us feel a different rhythm. Uh, here it's trying to make us feel in two four. So you have one and a two and a one and a two and a is supposed to be what it's supposed to feel like. But we need to keep it in six eight. So to count this, you would have one latali two. So that goes. That's starting on that low E flat with the first finger down. 
Then we would play tuta la lita one. Again, it's tuta la lita one. Tuta la lita one. Starting on the A natural. Tuta la lita one. Then one la ta li two. Again, one la ta li two from the G flat. One la ta li two. The next G flat is tuta la lita one. Tuta la lita one. And one, uh, one la ta li two. You put them all together and it's a tongue twister, but it's one la ta li tuta la lita one la ta li tuta la lita one la ta li two. Tricky. I guarantee T if you can learn to count this in whatever counting system that you use. If you use the Eastman counting system like I've just explained, that's fine. If you use the one and two and method, that's fine. So you'd have one, two, and three, four and five, six and one. For me, that's harder to, to keep that feeling in two, but it's possible to do that. I really recommend you learning the Eastman counting system. Uh, but if you can count it, you can play it. It's iffy that you could learn how to play it, but you won't have that rhythmic integrity if you can't count it out loud. So really practice the counts out loud. Go back and forth between playing and saying the counts.